In this episode, we're going to cover data management, which could cover a lot of different areas. We could go into um, we could go into file I/O. We could also go into database storage and accessing a, an online database through a web API. Uh, but we're going to keep it very simple because that's the nature of this series, and the games that we end up building out aren't going to need anything too crazy. So what we're going to be doing is covering a simple controller to manage some player prefs. And player prefs are a simple registry-based data storage system that Unity provides for us. And we're going to go ahead and build a simple wrapper class for that. Let's start off by creating our subfolder here in the Unity core uh, directory. And we're going to call this our data folder. And just like we did in the last episode, we're going to start off with a test class. Now the test class is going to outline all of the major requirements for our data controller, which will be fairly simple. And it's a good way of telling yourself what you need your system to do before you actually implement anything in that system. So let's go ahead and create this script. We're gonna call this test data. And then let's go ahead and open that up. Okay, as usual, I like to start off on sort of a blank state. So I'll get rid of some of this auto-generated text. And then I want to go ahead and put this test data class into the appropriate namespace. So that's going to be Unity Core and data. So Unity Core data is where all, this entire system is going to live. And uh, this system is going to have a public reference to the data controller. So data controller. And this is a class that we are going to create after we finish the test script. So we're going to have a region called Unity Functions. And inside that region, we're going to have um, the if conditional to determine if we're in the editor. Because we don't run, we don't want to run any of this uh, test logic unless we're in the editor. So in case we forget the script on an object, whenever we actually deploy the project, none of this code is going to actually run. So let's put some key detection inside of the update function. And then we're just going to start off by checking for uh, the ability to increment a score. So actually, before we before we do anything in here, let's create some private functions to add to a score and to reset the score. So let's do let's create a region called private functions, and then we'll have a function for adding the score, and we'll just preface this with uh, test. So test add score, and then we'll add some delta to the to the actual score, and then we'll have a function for resetting the score, something like that, and then we'll end up using these functions uh, up here in update whenever we detect certain keystrokes. So let's start off by detecting a couple keys. So we'll do get key up. And then key code dot r let's say let's see and then here we'll just test adding to the score we'll add one to the score here so add score one and then we want to of course test what would happen if we were to decrement the score so let's decrement by one and then we want the ability to actually reset the score so let's see what would happen if we actually reset the score and then we'll add some logging into here to see what's actually happening with our test data okay so let's let's add a, uh, a debug log here and we'll just say this is actually let's go ahead and create a a logging function to handle our logging so let's create a private void log and then we'll pass a message into that and then what we can do is just say debug.log. And then we want to preface all of our logs inside of this class with 
the test data keyword, just so we know where this log is coming from. And then we're going to append the message. So let's go ahead and add some logs. So we'll log here. If we increment the score, we'll say score is equal to data.score. And data, actually this will be data controller.score. So this is going to be coming from our data controller class. And then we also want to log a high score. So uh, we'll say high score is equal to data controller dot high score. Okay, and you might be wondering uh, why we didn't create any test class for this high score. That's because we want the data controller to handle assignment for the high score based on what the score is equal to. Okay, so we'll get into that whenever we actually script out the data controller. And uh, we basically just want to do this for every keystroke. We want to go ahead and log this every time we press one of these test keys. And let's go ahead and change the keys that actually run this logic. So for the decrement of the score, we can use T. And to reset the score, we can use spacebar. Of course, these key codes are kind of arbitrary, so you can use whatever you want here as long as each one of these key codes are different for each of the different test functions. Okay, so now we need to figure out what we're gonna be doing in the add score and the reset score uh, functions. This is gonna be pretty simple. All we're gonna do is say data controller for the add score, we're gonna say data controller dot score plus equals delta. And then we'll say for reset score, data controller dot score is equal to zero. Okay, and this is how we want to access the score object uh, from the actual game controller whenever we're creating different games. So this test function kind of provides a window uh, into what, like how we want to use the data controller, if that makes sense. Okay, so if we have the ability to just write something like this and everything else gets handled for us. That is to say that scores are saved properly and high scores are saved properly. Uh, if all of that happens just from us writing this line, then that would be wonderful. Okay, so let's go back to Unity and make sure that we don't have any errors right now. Make sure we didn't make any typos or anything like that. Okay, of course we get the error that uh, the data controller can't be found. We still have to create that, so let's go ahead and do that. So we'll create the C-sharp script called data controller. Now let's open that up and see what we need to add to that. Okay, of course I'm gonna start off by just cleaning this up a little bit and getting rid of things that we may or may not need. We're gonna put this in the correct namespace, unity core dot data. Okay, and then we're going to have a couple of uh, properties. Essentially what we want to do here is skeleton the class out so that we have a good understanding of everything that this class is going to need to do. And we're going to keep it very minimal. Let's just say that all of our games are going to have a, a score property and a high score property. And we want both of those values to be saved. Um, we're not going to use any sort of file IO, so we're not going to be saving these scores into any files. We're going to be using Unity 3D's built-in class for player prefs. That's going to make things nice and easy for us to manage. And it's going to keep everything really clean and simple. So first we should talk about what the player prefs class actually is. So let's start off by creating some private functions here. So we'll create a region called private functions. And in this, we want to create our wrapper functions for the player prefs. So let's say our score is an integer. We'll go ahead and create a function called save int. And then we want to have a name for this data. So whatever, the, whatever uh, string value name we want to assign to the data. For instance, if we have a score, or if it's a high score, or if it's a player health, or anything like that, that we want to save, that would be the string value that we pass in for the first parameter 
The second parameter is actually the value that we want to assign to that. Okay, and so with player prefs, all we have to do is say player prefs dot set int and then pass those parameters in. So this is just a simple wrapper function. Instead of set int, we want to use save int. And it also means that we don't we, we can limit the amount of times that we need to actually call player prefs. We're only going to be doing that in these localized instances. Um, so let's go ahead and create another function for getting that integer. So get int, and then that's going to return an int, but we also want to pass in that uh, the name of that data. So then we can return player prefs dot get int and pass that data value in. Now with get int, whenever we're trying to get data, we can optionally provide a default value that uh, if this value, if this data value hasn't been saved yet or if it doesn't exist, it would go ahead and initialize that with a default parameter. Uh, in this case, we're gonna use zero. And that just means if we try to get some data that doesn't exist, uh, Unity's not going to throw an exception on us and everything will continue to run smoothly. But what we really want here, uh, a better programming practice would be use would be to use a uh, constant. So we can have like a default int constant and our default int data is always going to be zero, something like that. So we can come back up here and say that our uh, default int is always going to be zero. So we'll create a private static read only called default int, set that to zero. Now we also want some uh, static read onlys for the names of our data that we want to use. So we'll have private static read only um, data score. That's going to be equal to score. So this is uh, what we would pass in to player prefs if we wanted to set or get the score from player prefs. So we'll also have another one of these for high score. Just like that, except this label would be high score. And these values are truly arbitrary. Whatever you put here in the static property is going to be the value that Unity uses to get your score or your high score. So if you were to, um, essentially what it means is you don't need to continue passing in string literals to the save int or get int function and everything remains very constant, if that makes sense, okay? Now what we can do is create some properties. If we go back to our test data script, you can see we're accessing the score from a property value. And so let's go ahead and create that property for score here. So we'll have a region for properties. Okay, so we have our region for properties and we want, we want to go ahead and uh, create the public score property. So we want the public score. That's of course going to have a getter and a setter. And now we want to decide what we want to do in the get and the set. So for score, when we want to get the score, it's pretty easy. We just return get int, the private function that we created down here, which is a wrapper for our player prefs. So we can say return get int. Since this is the score property, we want to pass in the score read only value. I just realized that we forgot the data type up here. So this is going to be a read only string. This will be a read only string. And this will be a read only integer. So don't forget to add your data types up here. Okay, so we have the getter for the score property. Now we need to handle the setter. So the first thing we want to do when we set the score is actually save that to player prefs. So we can save data score. And then since this is a property, we can use the C sharp value keyword, and then that's going to be saved into that uh, integer. So after we save the integer to memory, we want to go ahead and grab the score. So we can say score is equal to this dot score. So that's actually going to access the getter uh, that we just created above. So we want to get that score and then we want to compare that with a high score property. Okay, so we'll say something like if score, if the score that we just saved is greater than this dot high score, 
Well, in this case, we want to save the high score. So we could say something like this dot high score is equal to score. Pretty simple. But now we have to create this high score property since we're using the this keyword, the accessor this to get the high score that would indicate that the high score property is defined somewhere in here. So let's go ahead and create a public integer property called high score. Okay. Now for the high score property, we want this to be public because from our game, we will ultimately want to be able to access the high score so we can display that to the user. As you can see in our test script, we are accessing the high score property here as well. So we definitely want that to be public getter, but the setter can be private. We don't need anybody else setting that. We want full control within the data controller to set that privately. Okay, so the getter is going to be just like uh, the getter for the score. The only difference here is we're going to be getting the int data high score. Okay, and then when we set, it's going to be very easy as well. All we have to do is say save int, and then we'll pass the data high score value here. And then we'll also pass the C sharp keyword value. Okay, and that's pretty much all we need to do here. So just to recap what we're doing, uh, we're testing the ability to add to the score and decrement from the score. And then we're also testing the ability to reset the score. Anytime we set the score, we are constantly checking, or I'll say, well, we check every time that we set the score, we check to see if that score is higher than the high score. And if it is, then we go ahead and set the high score. So this is about all we need from the script. So let's go back to Unity to make sure we don't have any errors. And then we can uh, run Unity to see if this actually works. Okay, so it looks like we don't have any errors here. We can go ahead and go into our test object that we created in the last episode, and we can add the test data script. Now we have to pass some sort of data controller in, so we can create an object called core systems here and we'll end up using this core systems object more in future tutorials. Uh, but on here, we're going to have the data controller. And then we just want to drag that data controller onto the test data script. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this and everything should work. So we press R and that adds to the value and we should be able to see those logs show up. So we're going to press R to add to the score. Okay, so I pressed R. Here we can say we can see score is equal to one. High score is also now equal to one. If I hit R again, score is equal to two. High score is also equal to two. So let's go back and say T, because T is going to decrement the score. So what we would expect to see is that the score is equal to one and the high score is still equal to two. Okay, so score is equal to one, high score is equal to two. Let's go ahead and increase the value a couple more times. So score is equal to seven, high score is equal to seven. If I hit space, that's going to reset the score. So now we're at score is equal to zero and high score is equal to seven. I'll increment one more time here and we can see score is equal to one and high score is equal to seven. So the cool thing about this is because we're using player prefs to handle all of this, it's going to be saved in memory. So if I turn off Unity or if I stop playing Unity and then I start playing again, we're going to see the same score. So if I press R, you know, we left off on score of one and a high score of seven. So if I increment that value using R, we should see a score of two and a high score of seven. Okay, and so that's showing up here. So that is it. Just to recap what we did, we built a simple wrapper class for the player prefs. We're not going to be doing any sort of complicated file IO or uh, data uh, management through a web API. We're not going to be doing any, anything like that since we're only dealing with some simple local storage data. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.